you've seen a rainbow. Maybe you were chasing tornadoes and happened upon one. But did you ever notice that the sky is darker above a rainbow than below? I never did until someone pointed it out. We're gonna find out why this is so with the help of refraction of light, dispersion, and the incomplete story you're usually told about why rainbows form. The story starts with refraction. The bending of light as it moves from one medium like air to another medium like water at an angle. Light actually slows down in water. Visible light would take 11 minutes instead of the usual eight to get from the sun to the earth if there were a giant ocean in between. So as light slows down when it enters water, the beam is forced to turn. But, unlike the constant speed of light in a vacuum, the speed of light in water depends on the color. Violet light moves slower in water than red light, so it will bend more as it enters the water. An incoming beam of white light will be spread out and separated into a spectrum of color. We call this dispersion. Now let's take this white light beam and send it through a droplet of water. Some of the light will refract into the droplet, then reflect off the back and refract back out to travel down to your eye, typically at an angle of 42 degrees between the incoming light and the outgoing light. This can occur in a circle of droplets, so if the ground weren't in the way, rainbows would be a full circle. Here's the fun part. Violet light refracts more in the water droplet than red light, as we discussed. So violet light should end up exiting higher in the water droplet than red. But if we look in the sky, red light is clearly higher than violet light. What's going on? Well, if you're observing from down here, this water droplet will only send red light to your eyes and the violet light will pass above you. It's the droplets down here that send violet light to you and the violet light will appear to be coming from lower in the sky, as it does. And that's how we get our colors in the rainbow from rain and sun. End of story. But there's one part I never understood. Why should all of the light enter the water droplet right at this point? Well, the answer is it doesn't. Some red rays enter here, some enter here, and they all exit in different directions. If we add back in the other colors, you end up with an exiting jumbled mess of color. This mess of color should look white, but it definitely doesn't. So what's going on? This is where it gets more complicated than you usually hear. As this red light ray enters higher from the midpoint, it exits at an increasingly large angle. But watch what happens here. Eventually, the ray turns around. No matter where red light enters the droplet, it can't go past this angle. That's the maximum angle, and it's 42 degrees for red light. It's slightly less for orange and yellow and so on until you reach violet where the max angle is 40 degrees. So it turns out that at that maximum angle, you also get a maximum bright brightness. So even though all the colors can reach here around violet's max angle, because their maximum is beyond that, violet is at its maximum brightness, so it stands out against the other colors. Same goes for the max of the other colors. Below violet, no colors are at a maximum, so all the colors mix again and form white. That's why the sky appears lighter below the rainbow than above. None of the light can make it out above red, so the sky appears darker. Then how did this second rainbow sneak up there? Well, you'll notice the colors are flipped in order, and again that the sky is lighter above them. That indicates that the light had to reflect twice inside the droplet. In order to get the right angle down to your eye, it actually had to enter the droplet from below the midpoint, and you get a double reflection, causing a second rainbow. Now the story is complete. The end.